we all know that companies want to be able to control what people do on their platforms and make it so if they don't like a certain phrase, you can be punished for using it. These companies aren't about freedom of speech and allowing people to make decisions for themselves. They're about control and having everything be the exact way they want it to be. But I've talked about in the past Microsoft implementing new moderation tools for things like Xbox Live to combat what they call toxicity on their platforms. And now Riot is doing something very similar, controlling what people can and can't say or do in their games. And even if you don't play any Riot games like League of Legends or Valorant, more and more companies want control over players and are adding moderation features just like this. And I think that this is such an important situation that more people need to know about and more people need to be talking about. So I'm going to be starting with a GameSpot article. Riot Games will record Valorant voice chat to combat toxic behavior. It's unclear how Riot's new chat moderation works, but data will be deleted after it's no longer needed. So Riot Games is updating its privacy notice to inform players that across all of its games, it will be using new tools in order to what they're calling reduce toxicity. The first game to use these abilities, which will record in-game voice chat when a report is filed, is the tactical shooter Valorant. I personally don't play Valorant. I don't have much of an interest in it, but I have played games like League of Legends in the past. Riot does create quite a lot of... Um, very prominent games in the industry. They're a big company. They do create a lot of uh, competitive games that a lot of people really like. But it says the studio will store audio data for use when players report those engaging in abusive or disruptive behavior. The data will then be scrubbed, though, to see if anything violates Riot Games' terms of service or other policies. It will be made available to the violating player if an infringement occurred and deleted after it's no longer needed. Data will also be deleted if the recording contains no disruptive behavior. Now, if you guys don't know, Riot is 100% owned by Tencent, a Chinese company. I've talked about Chinese companies in the gaming industry quite a lot, but no matter how many times Riot tries to convince us, just like Tencent has in the past, that the Chinese government has no control over their company or access to their data, you'd think that people wouldn't believe them anymore because it's just not true. Ultimately, any Chinese company or investors out of China have to answer to the Communist Party, and that includes giving them any data they collect. So they are collecting your data, and it is a Chinese company that does, again, have to directly answer to the Communist Party. I am honestly just so surprised that more people don't know about situations happening like this. They can use this to appease people within the Chinese government, but also to kowtow to people in the West who claim there's toxicity in games and that the battle against hate speech needs to be waged in gaming environments and that hate speech and toxic behavior is rampant from Valorant to League of Legends to even games that aren't just riots like Call of Duty. They are willing to sacrifice people's privacy under the guise of protecting players and clearly they're going to get away with it because this is just going to be slipped quietly into their eula so that one party and two party recording states don't come into play here because by simply agreeing to play the game you're agreeing to this and you cannot opt out of it it says a similar system is in place on PlayStation, though it requires players to record a small section of a chat in order to send it for a moderation review. I did talk about this in another video, but when it comes to Riot, they're literally just making us agree to something that doesn't even exist in game right now. And of course, when they add it, they're not going to be transparent with us and tell us how it works. This could set a very dangerous precedent in the gaming industry. When a giant company does something like this, more and more follow and we could see every gaming company try to do this. I said this in my videos about Microsoft and PlayStation doing something like this. When one company does it, all of the others follow along. Even if you don't play a Riot game, imagine your favorite game adding things and features like this in, where it records what you say and it can be used against you. That isn't okay in any game by any company. 
But continuing on, it says Riot said that the new voice moderation tools don't involve actively listening to live in-game audio. Sure, they can say that if they want. The studio clarified that it will only listen to audio once a report has been filed. For now, the system will be beta tested in North America before expanding elsewhere around the world. Those concerned about their privacy can always opt for a third-party voice chat app like Discord. Now, you don't need voice chat to play one of these games, obviously, but when you're playing against randoms, you're not going to want to ask them to give you their Discord and add them to a voice channel just to see if they suck. It backs you into a corner where you have to use a pre-made team and use a third-party voice chat tool. You use voice chat and you are being recorded by Riot or you do not use it at all and that sucks to do to people. We need more options for players, not less. It says, we are committed to making our games better for everyone who plays them, Riot said. These changes are Riot-wide TechCrunch reports, meaning all players across all of the studio's games, including League of Legends and Legends of Runeterra, will eventually have to accept them. And it says Riot didn't specify how these new voice moderation tools will work. According to the head of Player Dynamics, the technology required to detect behavior violation over voice chat is still in development. He hinted that it may lean on machine learning or focus on automated voice-to-text transcription. He also made an explicit reference to the pain in voice comms that spurred Riot to think of a solution to tackle abuse or disruptive behavior while gaming online. Now, machine learning can be a wonderful thing, but we shouldn't depend upon it to censor people. It is not technologically advanced enough to censor people because it is still dependent upon a narrative or directives it's given by, you know, developers or programmers. You have to give it a definition of what hate speech is and what abuse might might be and those are not even definitively defined. It continues on to say players are experiencing a lot of pain in voice comms and that pain takes away from um you know all kinds of experiences that people may have in their games. As an adult, I should be able to say the things that I want in a video game, and again, if someone doesn't like me, they're free to block me and free to mute me, and the glorious thing about that is they never have to interact with me again. This is a massive win for companies because they can run with the narrative that they're protecting players by calling their gaming environments toxic, and then by putting this into place, they're virtue signaling, you know, calling out the bad and showing how they're going to protect everyone and do good for all gamers out there. As a whole while also appealing to what we know is CCP policy, which is wanting all of their companies to collect as much data on as many people as possible, and they can use it for whatever purposes they're going to use it for. It sucks to see this happen for people's privacy to be put on the back burner, but I don't think companies are going to slow down on doing things like this anytime soon, and I think it's very important that we continue to talk about situations like this because our privacy only matters, apparently to us. But let everyone know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a like, share it, and subscribe to the channel. And of course, if you didn't, make sure to give it a dislike. I appreciate your support either way. But I will talk to you all again in the next video really soon.